your name and why we're here. Mm -hmm. um, hello, my name is Marshall Vial, um, and we are here at the opening of the Fifty Shades of Brown exhibition. Mm. I work at the Center for Sexuality. I run the Where the Rivers Meet program there. Um, so Where the Rivers Meet is a new program that was started uh, at the center um, that really, you know, aimed to really uh, increase uh, awareness and increase connection um, and education surrounding two-spirit folks and who they are in the city. Um, Where the Rivers Meet has been like a big inspiration for me um, in really trying to re revitalize like what it means to be two-spirit here in Treaty 7. Um, and how can how would I love to share that with, or how can I share that with other folks as well? The Where the Rivers Meet pro project has been going on um, for the last two years. Uh, I started off, I, I was doing a bit of a needs assessment for Two-Spirit folks living in Treaty 7 here. Uh, the center had kind of uh, wanted to find somebody who could, who was Two-Spirit and from the area who could find ways to really connect with uh, those, those folks um, and find out, you know, what did they need? Like, what are some of their most, uh, you know, serious needs um, and how could a place like the center accommodate or, or support those needs as well. Um, and so what I had done was I had met one-on-one -on -one with a bunch of Two-Spirit folks living in Treaty 7. Um, some of them were from the city, um, some from the surrounding communities as well. Um, so I had just met one-on-one -on -one of them and, and kind of asked them, like, what does the ideal Two-Spirit community look like for you? Um, and how could a place like the center support that vision as well? Um, and then in so doing, I was able to kind of just like really connect with folks and, you know, chat with them one on one and talk about um, their experiences growing up here and their experiences, um, you know, just dealing with, uh, you know, some of their unique um, s struggles and some of the unique um, just things that, that they're experiencing in their life, like growing up from a really young, young age, being, you know, being a racialized queer person as well, um, and just kind of like how that impacted them in their life. and. Um, what, what they want to see, what they want to see from a place like the center and like um, what, what kind of awareness they could have in the city as well. Um, so I had met with a few folks one-on-one. -on -one. I had met with an elder as well. Um, and we just kind of talked a little bit more about like some of the uh, historical understandings of what it means to be two-spirit and like how we could find ways to, to revitalize that knowledge even today so that folks who are you know, coming to terms with who they are, are able to kind of like refer to some of that knowledge and really find comfort um, in being a racialized queer person. Um, as it's, it's, it can be quite hard and difficult for folks. You know, there's nothing, uh, we see it at the center all the time, that there's nothing in, inherent about being racialized or queer that is difficult. It's more so the system in the world that, that we're having to experience what, what makes being those things really, really difficult. Um, there's tons of unique uh, vul vulnerabilities to being a racialized queer person, especially folks, in, you know, who are from this uh, from this land and who have um, stories and ancestors and um, just so so much knowledge surrounding these lands and stuff, and who often don't get to have their stories told. Um, I kind of I, I was I had let them know when I came on board that I that I don't have like a re research background. That's not who I am. Like I'm a theater person through and through, and um, so I was able to, you know, just let them know that, like, I wasn't going to, like, come at this as, like, a big re research project where I was able to kind of extract knowledge from, from a lot of folks, more so really about um, using some of my theatre background and, and, and what I find most value in, um, which is finding ways to connect with others. Um, I think the biggest goal that I, that I had in creating Where the Rivers Meet was finding ways to really help lay a foundation of understanding and find ways to act as a pillar of support for folks like myself, who probably didn't, you know, feel as affirmed or as celebrated growing up and who they were and stuff. And so, a huge passion for me behind this was really trying to just like bring 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 folks together. Um, so that's been like a bit a bit of an ongoing thing as well, like just kind of creating uh, some awareness around who two spirit folks are, and that kind of you know came up with this idea of Fifty Shades of Brown, really acknowledging that. Um, as racialized queer folks, as two-spirit folks, as native queer folks. We don't all look the same or act the same or express ourselves or really have, you know, a lot of the same values and beliefs, right? We're very unique in who we are as well. And so Fifty Shades of Brown is really trying to um, really celebrate that what brings us together is this notion and, and, and is this identity of being two-spirit, but we have so much more to offer than, than that as well. And that's why, 
you know, in creating this, I wanted to know, like, what does the ideal two-spirit community look like for these folks? Um, and how could a place at the center, including myself, how could we support them in creating that vision as well? Uh, so Fifty Shades of Brown is an awareness campaign that we started at the center, and this is really meant to uplift and honor uh, many of the two-spirit folks who are living here in Treaty 7. Um, you know, it uh, involves folks who um, are from some of these surrounding communities as well, um, as well as folks who are, you know, from a, a little bit further away who now call this place their home. Um, and this is really our way of just like allowing folks who are living here, who are experiencing life in the city here in the, in the Treaty 7 area, just let it, letting them kind of see themselves be, you know, honored on print or, you know, online as well. Uh, so my involvement, um, I uh, got involved in F Fifty Shades of Brown at the very beginning. Um, I'm a curator for Fifty Shades of Brown. Um, so my vision was to just get as many two-spirit folks, as many Native queers together um, so that we can kind of just gather and, you know, take some photos of who we are and what we look like and how we express ourselves and then find ways to share that with, with everyone else as well. So the idea for Fifty Shades of Brown kind of came in a few different um, phases. It was almost like a... Um, like a bug bite that kind of just kept coming back. Um, so I first had the idea for something called Fifty Shades of Brown uh, back when I was uh, in university at the U of L. Um, I was part of the Native uh, group there, and, and, and we were talking about like having some kind of awareness campaign so that we could really show that all of us, you know, Native folks who were part of NASA at the time. So a lot of us that were there wanted to kind of come up with a way to kind of just like showcase the diversity, um, like, of who we were. Right. We, as I said earlier, we don't all look the same or act the same or express ourselves in the same way or really come from the same place. Right. I think a really um, strong point in this was, was, was kind of taking away some of the, you know, the pan native um, understanding of what it means to be native. Right. Like really trying to make it more specific to like who we are in this area here, while also honoring and acknowledging where other folks are coming from as well. Like we all are all um, native to Turtle Island, but we all carry so much, uh, we, we all carry so many stories with, with us based on where we're from, because a lot of our knowledge is land-based, right? And so there are a lot of folks who are coming from different parts and talking a little, little bit about where they came from, from as well. And so um, this awareness campaign was really aimed at kind of just acknowledging some of those stories as well. I didn't get a chance to do that when I was in school, but it had always been something that I wanted to do. I kept it in my back pocket and then um, over the course of the pandemic um, I was involved with like an online two-spirit group and we just kind of met like three times a month and we just got together and we um, you know we talked business and then we talked about like values and stuff like that and then we also just kind of like hang, hang or hung, hung out together as well um, so we also just like hung out with each other as well and in the course of that I'm just realizing that like although we're kind of all brought together by you know identifying ourselves and, and, and feeling most at home using the phrase two-spirit to describe ourselves, we were all so different in the way that we acted and where we came from. And so I really wanted to acknowledge that. And so when I got this uh, chance to, you know, be a part of building and leading where the rivers meet, I knew that that was something that I wanted to go back to. I wanted to find a way to really um, pay homage and, and honor that initial project that I had in mind to really bring it um, and, and make, make it even more specific to the Native queer folks that I, that, I, that I call friends and family and kin and really find a way to allow ourselves to you know, be seen and heard for a lot of folks as well. Yeah, so when I think about um, how Fifty Shades of Brown came together, I mean, it, it's, it's had many different um, stages of development. So we started off um, we booked one of the theater spaces here in the city, set up some uh, ca cameras and lights and stuff, and then my good friend Elena, um, one, one spot came um, and just kind of took photos of, of, of a bunch of folks. I put out an online call and then folks who responded to that, we gathered them all together. Um, we did like a one-on-one -on -one photo shoot um, where they just kind of got to pose and like put on, you know, some, uh, some stuff that made them feel most at home. Um, Elena's sis, sister, who is um, one of the models that, that we took a photo of, um, she was there and she was the one who kind of like did everybody's face and kind of got them all beautiful, um, a, a, allowed for their internal beauty to be shown um, out for the cameras as well. Um, so it was just a full two days. Uh, two um, eight-hour eight days of just bringing folks together, taking photos of them, just really make, making them feel at home. 
Um, and also just like talking about like what are our own personal, um, you know, how do we define two spirit for ourselves and how do we want to share that with other folks as well. In that process, I asked folks like, okay, so fill in the blank, two spirit is blank or two spirit looks like blank. Um, and then gave folks a chance to just kind of like talk about what, what that was for themselves as well. Um, and then from there, I had this idea of like doing a bit of a mural as, as, as well, because I wanted to, you, you know, there's so much, um, when I was in the process of doing the photo shoot, I, I, like I told folks, I was like, look out onto the street over here because we, we were um, in a studio that was a bit high and there was like buildings all over. And I was like, yeah, like have a look out here it was kind of, kind of like my Lion King moment, moment where I was like, everything you see over here belongs or, or whatever he says. Um, I, I asked him, I was like, look, look out here, like imagine yourself driving down the cloud trail or, or wherever it was. And you look up and you see yourself on like a big build, billboard. Like imagine like how that'll feel. And, and, and we all just got so excited about that. Um, but there was something about like a billboard or just like showcasing images where I was like, oh, like I wanna, I wanna make it more like something that folks can visit and go to. And then I got the idea to invite Kayla to, to do a mural for us. I wanted to find a way to really kind of like take the beautiful images that Alana shot of these beautiful, amazing models and kind of like give her own spin into that as well. And so I asked her, I was like, please like take these images and feel, feel free to like use them to create some kind of beautiful mural that, that you're also kind of giving your spirit to as well. I think what's so beautiful about, about um, adding in the mural project as well is that somebody got to physically like take these images that they, they got from Alana, um, get get some paint in the paintbrush and actually like in the process of like moving the you know the paintbrush with their hands like they're they're also giving that like spirit that like essence and they're putting that into this wall as well and so just the fact of like being able to just kind of bring so many folks together and, and, and giving folks an opportunity to create beautiful work that was for by and with two spirit folks living in the area which is really something that i was that i that i, that I was really drawn by and, and, and inspired by and made sure that I, that I wanted to do. But I was like, it can't just end here. Like, like, like the mural can't, can't be the, on, the only thing that we do. So then I was like, let's do a bit of like an exhibition where we can kind of like display these photos, give the wider, you know, city audience the chance who may not always go to like where the mural site is. They, you know, giving them a chance to kind of come and experience these photos in, in a new way as well. And I think that that was the biggest thing is giving folks um, you know, different ways of seeing these images. And so I was like, yes, bringing folks together, giving them a gathering spot where, where they could come and see the, um, see the photos and the images and the models, see them on a billboard, but also give, giving them the chance to kind of like come and see it in this kind of setting as well, where they can kind of see images and like soundscapes and stuff. It was really about like, just kind of like utilizing the images that we had and the faces and the beautiful images that, that, that we had and kind of let, letting them be showcased in different ways. And so it was like online to a mural to here. And, and, and I think the biggest thing for me is, is, is that gathering space aspect as well. Cause I don't think there's, there's too many, in, in, we, we are on Treaty 7 land, home of so many different folks who call this place their home. But there's, there's not really a gathering space in the city for folks to go to and, and, and just kind of exist and be. And so that was the biggest thing with the mural was like really just giving folks a chance to gather and I think here as well, bringing folks to the Grand, one of the oldest theaters in the city, giving them a chance to gather here in this way, you know, showing up for the two-spirit community in Treaty 7. And just like, I think that's the most be beautiful thing behind it. It's just that when folks are coming here, when they're going to the mural, they're actually showing up for two-spirit folks in this area. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about doing all of this. You know, when I think about what two-spirit means, I think about uh the journey of trying to discover what what that is like it's uh two spirit isn't something that i find that i'm easily able to like look and open up a di dictionary or go online and and type in like what does two spirit mean um it's kind of a bit of like a process of like um reigniting um a flame of knowledge of um you know of history and kind of putting that back into like a more contemporary understanding of what it means to be queer and what it means to be native and bringing those things together. Um, I've heard the term two spirit since I was, you know, a child. And um, since then I've been on this journey of like, what does it mean? And so I would like, you know, go, go and ask 
um, el elders and I look, look online and I'm like, I need to know like, what does it mean? What does two, two spirit mean? And what I wanted, I think was like a clear definition. I wanted someone to define it for me. Um, but I think in the process of like being on the journey of like trying to discover that I've been able to like, uh, see that like what two spirit is, is a very personal thing for a lot of folks. It's not something that I find we can easily define and describe. It's more of a feeling, it's, it's, it's a way of life, it's how you express yourself. And I think because it's that, it's so personal to everybody, um, you know, who is two-spirit across Turtle Island. Um, the, the term does come from the Anishinaabe term, uh, meets money thuag, and so that, that uh, translated rough, roughly translated as um, you know some, someone who walks with who carries um, a masculine spirit as well as a fem feminine spirit, right? And so it's this idea that like somebody being able to uh, um, somebody being able to embody masculine and feminine all at the same time, and kind of seeing those play out inside of their bodies, um, and they're in constant uh, constant. Uh, harmony of trying to kind of put those things together because I think about the world that we're living in now we, we um many of like the our understandings of what gen gender is and um sex and all that stuff is it, we we're, we're living in an, in an incredibly binary world of like this is over here man is over here woman is over here and, and we're living in this world where I think we we force ourselves to kind of separate those and so when I, when I think about what it means to be two-spirit and I think about the history and the stories, what I'm seeing and what I'm, what I'm realizing and what I'm feeling is that like, there doesn't have to be one or the other. There's something that's in the middle, it's more fluid. It's about embodying masculinity and fem femininity for me um, in a way that I think helps me to kind of see the world in a different way. I think about some of the roles that were given to two-spirit folks and it was things like being able to mediate because you're able to kind of see things in different ways. Being healers because you're able to kind of like identify where folks might be coming from and giving them the tools so that they can kind of like heal. They can start a, a healing journey. Um, finding ways to like teach young folks about stuff and, 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 and it was because of being able to kind of see things in different ways. and in a very unique way because of being able to kind of understand many different perspectives. Because of that, it was about really passing on some of that knowledge as well in, in a really, really unique way. Um, but I think for me, being two-spirit is about being able to think with both my head and, and in my heart. Being able to you know, carry the combined strengths of the fathers and mothers of our tribes. Being able to really walk this world in a way that is constantly trying to search for balance and understanding. Um, and, and as I said earlier, I think being Two-Spirit is, is really about how can I build a foundation of understanding at all times? How could I act as a pillar of support at all times? I think being Two-Spirit is so difficult to define because it's, it's a very personal thing for a lot of folks as well. And because of our history of um, colonization, a lot of those stories, a lot of those so songs and dances, a lot of those were... I'm hidden for a really, really, really long time because, because we're now living in this really binary world where we do see men and women as two different things, a lot of those stories were lost. And so I think we're kind of in a process now where folks are slowly trying to like really revitalize that knowledge and, 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 and I'll admit and, I, and, and say that I, I still see a lot of our older folks who are still very scared of like kind of looking into those stuff and, and, and being able to fully talk about what being Two-Spirit is because it is a very personal thing for a lot of folks as well. And it does take a lot of healing and a lot of, I think, just acknowledging of many of the traumas that, that, that we're living with day, day to day. I think for me, Two-Spirit is about healing. It's about celebration. It's about honoring, but it's also about um, really finding ways to like honor the many different facets of human expressions that, that we have. It's about not being put into a box. It's about thinking about the idea of non-binary as an identity for someone, but also as a worldview as well, about something that we can attain, something that we can reach towards. Thinking, and I think being, being willing to see the gray. I think we, we, you know, the world that we're in is such black and white, but I think the more that we're willing to see the gray, the more that we're willing to acknowledge that like as human beings, like we're, we have so much inside of us. We have so much that we can explore. Um, and just like to not put ourselves in, in boxes. I, I think being, being able to leave assumptions at the door and just be yourself.
Um, so the first time that I heard the term two-spirit, I was sitting with my grandma and we were looking at one of um, my older sister's yearbooks. And we like flipped to this page and I noticed that my sister in the yearbook was wearing a tuxedo at her grad. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, like just so scandalized to see this woman wearing this tuxedo. And so I just asked, I was like, oh, like why is she wearing a tuxedo, I, you know, at grad? Um, and then my grandma was just like, well, that's because she's two-spirit. And there was this, you know, this, this, this pause and she said, she's two-spirit just like you. And so being able to, I think, being like given those words and given that um, identity has been like a huge part of my life. Obviously at the time I didn't understand what she was talking about. I was like, what is this? Like, are you saying I'm too, two faced? Like, what are you talking about? Um, but I don't think a lot of that really clicked until I was, um, like in my third year of university, I was, you know, 21 at the time, 2021. And I don't think I really tried to like understand what that was for myself until about that time. Um, I, I remember hearing, you know, that term, um, said in reference to me for a long time. Um, even like when I was in school, you know, someone would be like, oh, like you're two spirit or like, you know, just like hearing and I'm just like, oh, am I? You know what I mean? Like I never, um, I never, uh, I suppose I never got the chance to like truly identify with that or understand what it means for me until I think I was ready. Um, which, which I think is a really interesting thing to do. Like, like it's, you're aware of something and, and you know it exists, but you're also like not sure how to like kind of see what it is. And so I think, you know, starting in 2015, I kind of went on a journey of like, well, what is this? Like, you know, I want to know more about this. I, like everybody, for, since as long as I can remember, folks have been like telling me about it and, and all of this stuff. But I was like, what does it mean? Like, what does it all mean for, for myself? And so I went on a journey of like, you know, trying to like uh, define and like, you know, find out um, where does the two spirit live? Like, where does that live inside of me? Um, and so I'd say it's been a journey in the last like seven, eight years of really, I think, embodying that and thinking a bit of thinking of it as a bit of like a role that I have to like um, live up to, thinking about it as a responsibility, thinking about it as something that I have to like explore in an effort to like, as I said earlier, like build that foundation of understanding. So when I think about like people's perception of me and like their willingness to like call me two-spirit or see me as somebody who was two-spirit I think it's just because I, I've always just been a very expressive child like I um pe pe people ask me all the time like oh like why are you an actor like how did you get into acting like why did you love theater and I was like I think it's just because I've always been really extra as a kid and I think because of that because I've been very expressive and um just willing to like be goofy and like just loud all the time and always wanting to perform. I think that was like something that like made folks um, refer to me in that way. Yeah, and I think I I think that like that feminine energy that I had, I think it was more present and um, more prevalent when I was a child. I think it was like you know we we all go through like growing up, we become adults, and we think that we have like roles to play and stuff, right? And I think there was a bit of like kind of shying away from like the feminine, trying to like be be more masculine I think like th there was that journey and I, and I think it was it was when I kind of tried to like overcome performing masculinity when I was no longer interested in like living up to like societal standards of what it means to be a man or what it means to be person all like I think that was when I kind of gave myself the freedom to like free the feminine like I I, I started drag I started like performing more in like a feminine way um and that was I think for me freeing freeing myself in a lot of ways. So when I reflect on like my life up until this point, I think that the term two-spirit has been something that has been present, but I don't think that there was always a willingness to explore what that was um, for myself. There was always, there was an awareness for sure, this understanding that like um, people who were diverse, who didn't exactly conform to like societal understandings of what it means to be a man or a woman, knowing that there were folks um, in stories that I've been told and, and stuff, knowing that they existed and knowing that there were a ton of folks, even in my own family who were trans or who were two spirit, knowing that they were accepted. Like it just, it wasn't something that I really, I think gave a second thought to, but I often think about like, well, why didn't I like explore that sooner? Like, why didn't I like, tried to like find out what that meant for myself sooner. And I think it just, it had a lot to do with, I think, um, just kind of wanting to like go along with like what 
society thought that I should be and stuff, right? Like wanting to conform, especially at like a really like special time in my life of like leaving home for the first time and like entering, you know, living in a city for the first time, you know, being um, in school that wasn't on reserve for the first time. There was so much in my life where I was like, well, I, I need to conform. Like I, there's so many different stereotypes about Native folks, you know, in the city, as, as I'm sure we're all aware. And I think for myself, it was like, well, let, let me try to be like, let me try to subvert those like stereotypes by, by conforming to how everybody thinks I should be and, and, and act and stuff. And I think when I was ready to kind of let that go and just kind of be myself and not worry about what other folks thought, then I was able to, I think, really explore what that meant for myself and really, I think, find a home in it, you know, find, find home and identifying myself as two-spirit and find a home and allowing myself to be seen as that as well. And, and in many ways, just expressing the feminine spirit energy that I've always been. Like I've, I've always been extremely femme and, and, but I think embracing that has been um, a challenge, like a personal challenge, which I don't think a lot of folks would really realize because I've always just been, I've, I've always just been this. Like I've about, but, um, but it's, but it's funny when I, when I think about like myself, my own journey, I'm just like, yeah, like it really was a struggle. I, and I, I like if it, if it wasn't a struggle, if it wasn't an internal um, struggle for me, then I think I would have been able to embrace it, you know, when I was growing up. And I don't think I would have been as nervous or as scared. Yeah. When I think about why it was so important for me to curate or be a part of or start a project like this, um, I really think it has to do with like a little bit selfishly, like wanting myself to, to be seen, but also I think like just giving folks another chance to be seen as well. Um, you know, in my early years of like um, wanting to like create a safer space for queer folks to exist, um, I had really wanted to like also find a space for racialized queer folks to exist. Because um, we, we often don't think about stuff like that, right? We, we think about like, oh, like, we, we, we have pride, we have so many, like we're so accepting in our, in our world now, like, like everyone can marry who they want or they can, you know, but there's, despite pride being something that is widely celebrated in the city and elsewhere, I really think that like intersectionality, understanding that like people who come from different parts of the world as well, like, thinking about people who are racialized, thinking about people who um, have disabilities, thinking about women. Like there's uh, so many folks in this world who are queer, but are also part of so many other communities as well. And oftentimes we don't see those, those folks who are part of those communities also get a chance to sit down and, and, and be in the room. I remember I, I had wanted to plan a, um, a two-spirit cabaret where I could like get a bunch of my two-spirit friends together, drag queens that I had met and, and get us together and, and like do a cabaret. Let us be in the room. Let us have a night where we could just like be with each other and like showcase our arch other folks. And, um, and I know that this, this, was, um, this was said not as like an insult or not as like something that was meant to hurt me, but like someone was like, well, I just like, I don't think having a two-spirit cabaret is a good idea because there aren't a lot of two-spirit folks in the area. And I was like, well, that's a lie. Like, I know, like, I know that two-spirit folks have walked these lands since time immemorial. I, I, I know that we've existed, that we have stories and songs and dances here for a really, really long time. We think about these identities as carrying such a rich history behind them. So I know it's false that, they're, that we don't have a lot of folks who are two-spirit. And so I think about what inspired me to do this was I think because I know that there are so many beautiful two-spirit folks who are living in the city. Like there, we, there's so many folks who are native and queer and, and come from isolated communities who are trying to find their place in the city, I know they're out there. Like, I I know we're here. I'm sitting right in front of you. Um, a lot of the folks who are part of this are right in front of us as well. Like, we're here, like, you know, see us. I, and, and I think that's a huge part of this as well, is like, just like, begging to be seen, begging to be affirmed, at, at least for me. And so I think doing this is like a chance to 
be seen. And I know that like it comes with like, I think being seen when you're ready to be seen. And I, I think for me, like I'm personally ready to be seen. I know that's not the case for a lot of folks. Um, I know that being two spirit is really hard. It, it, some folks, you know, it's really hard for them to show up for themselves. But I think as some, someone who's like ready to be seen, ready to show up for themselves and ready to like invite other two spirit folks as well and let them know that like I'm here, that like we are building community here, that we do exist. I think that's ultimately what I hope that folks get out of this is that I really hope that they, you know, take a moment to step back and they say, hey, the black and white male, female world that we're living in is not the answer. Like there's, you know, we all have our own values surrounding gender and, you know, sex and all of that stuff as well. We all have our own values surrounding that. But I think, you know, just giving ourselves a minute to stop and breathe and saying, hey, like there are so many other ways to view the world. We don't have to see the world as a bi binary. We can see the world as non-binary. We, we, we can embrace the gray. We, we don't have to um, resist change so much. You know, there's so much in the world right now about like change and like, well, there's so many terms and there's this and there's that. But I think that like the reason why we have so many of those terms now, why, why we're laying space and giving so much space for those terms to exist is that I think we need to be able to be open to like give a voice to folks who don't often get to be heard. Um, and change isn't bad. You know, I think about like why as humans we fear change and it's because like to accept change is to accept that everything that we've known, everything that we've been taught, everything that we've like experienced up until this point has been wrong. Um, but it's, it's okay to be wrong. It's, it's okay to admit that like what you've learned about gender is wrong or not wrong, but just that like it's okay to admit that like what you know about gender can be so much bigger than than what we know now. And I think that like people are slowly like warming up to that idea, which I'm glad for. Yeah, I think what I said about which I'm glad for is a good end. When people are coming into the grand to see, to w witness, to experience Fifty Shades of Brown, I hope they're able to, to see joy on the walls. I hope they're able to see that there are so many folks who are just so beautiful inside and out, that are so happy. You know, I think when we think about um, where we, what we've had to do to get to this point, to be open, to express ourselves, like we've, we've had to overcome so much. I really hope that people are able to pay wit witness to joy and see that joy exists, that we can be ourselves and still have the best time. I hope that when folks are coming in, they're able to take a minute and 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 um, read a little bit about you know who who folks are. I hope they're able to just like be surrounded and be be enveloped and be wel welcome into the space, because I think as I said, like we're so I, I, a huge part of like taking up space is, is is holding space, and I think what we're doing is we're holding space for folks to learn something new. Um, so I hope that folks are able to like witness joy but are, i also hope they're able to like take away something new that they can then you know hopefully bring back into their own lives and kind of just like reflect on their own experiences and their own values and beliefs and their own ideas surrounding things like you know gender and sex and all of that stuff as well i really hope that people are able to come here and take away joy you know there's so much um especially in you know in the last few years there's so much about our history as native folks who are you know who've who've grown up and who've, who've, who've been on Turtle Island for such a long time. There's so much knowledge surrounding that. And oftentimes um, it's really hard stuff to take in. It's, it, it's, it's stuff that is really hard to digest um, because of the hurt and because of the trauma and because there's so much that goes into it. And I want folks to, to acknowledge that as well. But I also want folks to know that we're still living and breathing. We're still thriving. You know, we're still smiling posing for cameras. We're still able to gather in this space. Um, and I really hope that folks are able to take away some knowledge as well, because I'm so much of who I am is, is being able to, you know, give stories, give knowledge. We don't talk about in our, in our ways, in, in our black ways, we don't talk about like telling stories, like, like we give stories, right? Like, and so in many ways, I hope that we're able to kind of give folks a story of like a new way of seeing yourself. Thank you so much for coming to Fifty Shades of Brown 
for being a part of this exhibit, for allowing yourselves to walk these halls with, the, with an open heart and just hearing things in, in a new way. I really hope that you have a great experience um, because it's been so great getting to share um, bits of myself and bits of where I come from. Um, and I really hope that folks are able to just kind of, you know, take away some joy. So thank you all so much for being here. <laughs>